Hey Space Engineers, welcome back to Hyphestus Prime on this fantastic morning. Hope you're all well. Welcome back here to The Beast in the command center. You can sort of see over my left shoulder, I've added a couple of little bits and pieces in. And over my right shoulder, we have the beginnings of a map. So I'll talk more about that later. So first of all, just to catch you up on some of the things I did off camera, I did indeed revisit those GPS locations along with a couple of new ones. Took some aerial photography there. I also visited the Treasure Island. And while I was there, I just quickly made a refinery. That means that now I've unlocked reactors. So I broke that refinery down again and then I grabbed the rest of those uh, gravity components. So now I've got enough of those to complete the contract so that's something we're going to have to figure out how to actually get those to the trading post. I think probably the easiest way is just to drive the beast up there and I'll figure out a way to connect it up. I might even be able to use the buggy arm potentially. So anyway, our reactors are now unlocked and I might have to look at putting one on the beast. Got the hydrogen engine, works well, happy with that. It's just not really powerful enough to charge up those batteries in a hurry. It's got like about two hours charge time so that's an awful lot of ice to mine and put through. They've got a few uranium ingots so I might be able to do something there. Just more as an emergency measure if I get caught short again. So let's get on with it. I want to start off with showing you some LCD stuff on the screens so we'll head to the back deck to do that. Now the reason why I'm using this LCD around the back is because I put it in a very long time ago and at the time I said oh I'll find something to put on there and I never did so now's as good a time as any. So first thing we need to do is have an image to put on there. To start with I'm going to put a nice simple two colour uh, faction logo. So this is one that I've come up with for my faction. This first method I want it to be, it's low resolution pretty much but there is certain advantages which I'll tell you in a minute. So 178 by 178 is the resolution I want for that. And I'm just going to save it as a PNG file. And then I'm going to go into this um, program here, SE Image LCD. So that's Space Engineers Image to LCD, which you can uh, download. I'll try and put a link into the description. First thing I'll do is go into the File Explorer and find the location of the image that I want to use. So that's just up here in this fiction folder. So there it is. So we'll just enter that. And then just need to go through these settings. So the monospace font is what we want. And then we want, we don't worry about dithering for this pretty simple image. I'll talk a little bit about dithering in another image. And then make sure the size is right. Need to unclick the RLE box. I don't really know what that does but we need to unclick it otherwise it goes wrong and once it's converted we can copy all these strange symbols and icons and then we'll jump back into space engineers and go into the control panel for the lcd and we need to check that we're on the right font i've used this one before so it's already set up on monospace but normally it would be set to default so change that and then paste all those strange characters into the text field they'll just come up as like question marks but that's fine and then we need to change the font size to 0 0.1 so we need to shrink it right down to its very smallest size. Now there's this black edge around the image. That's because of the text padding. So just bring that back to zero. Sometimes it defaults to 2%. And there's this little black box down the bottom right hand corner, which I don't know how to get rid of. But uh, yeah, there we go. Our image up on the screen. A pretty quick and easy way to put an image up actually. And the good thing is, is that it is essentially just text. So for saving and that sort of thing, it really makes life a bit easy uh, for when it comes time for publishing, for example, it's just text in a screen. So there's nothing, there's no mods or scripts or anything like that. So all pretty straightforward, all just with vanilla, the base game. Now, before I move on to the other method, I will just go through how to set up these button panels because I find it really useful for this because it is quite easy. Actually, just before I do that, quickly go through what I did here. I was having quite a few problems with 
this hinge not going up and down very quick and sort of catching. Now I actually figured out that it was because of the inertia tension that I turned on which I kind of needed to do for when I was traveling. So what I've done now is I've hooked up a timer which not only unlocks the hinge but also turns the inertia tension either on or off. So that now I've got quite a usable hinge when I need to lift it up and down and then it's got a much better way of staying it. Also got those signal lights on there as well so I can see what mode it's actually in. So this is just another one of these things I've added which is really making my life a lot easier and this beast is just coming along nicely. But anyway we'll get back to the icons. So here's some I prepared earlier. Now they are smaller, they're 89 by 89 pixels. So that's what 25% the size of the other ones. Now you can fit the larger ones on or should say use them but it compresses it and distorts it quite a bit. So I just go with this uh, smaller size. Now you can see this is square even though the buttons aren't. I've got this bit down the bottom here, this strip that doesn't actually appear on the buttons. If I make it a rectangle, a 16 to 9 ratio, then it kind of still stretches it out, which is a bit odd really. I guess it's just the way the buttons are set up, even though they're rectangle, um, the mechanics must think it's square. I'll show you what I mean, because I'll, I'll make this copy here, I'll just make it version 2, and yeah, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'll start with this icon and we'll pop that into the image to LCD program. Change that to 89 to 89 and convert it. There we go, a little bit quicker that time. Copy that across and put it into the LCD text field. Now, this is the first time that I've set up this particular button panel. So we'll edit the text, we'll just delete what I had in there before. Once again the question marks over the top but it'll sort itself out. Need to change the font to monospace. And then also the font size. Now this one I make it 0.2. And that's all good. And there we go. Uh, it's the wrong icon for the wrong button, but I'll sort that out in a minute. <laughs> Alright, I've uh, converted over that cropped version, so I will just copy that to the clipboard and pop it into the text field. So the number 3 button, which is the right button for that particular icon. So just go through this process again, just replace it with what I've got there and I end up with the question marks which when I use the right font mono space and change the font size to 0.2 which is what I use for the 89 by 89 icons on this particular type of button panel or these really small icons I should say and there we go, yeah you can see how it's stretched out the green arrow, up and down arrow, should be centered in the screen and you can see it's actually poking below the bottom of it. Anyway, so that's the button panels. I will move on and get the rest of them sorted. We'll just go back to that first panel and I'll show you about the dithering. So a fairly easy process there to give a pretty good result, especially with my very basic icon graphic skills. And of course with the system just being text, it stays in there so it's pretty bulletproof. They won't drop off when you change settings or something a bit later. So we'll move back to the screen here and I'll just quickly talk about the dithering because that is a factor you need to be aware of. So if we get a picture that's got a little bit more detail, I've prepared one earlier which has been edited down to 178 by 178 pixels so we'll load that up. I'll convert that just without any dithering on and we'll see how that comes up in the preview panel. 
and that's not actually looking too bad i really wasn't expecting that i was thinking it was going to be a lot more blocky and yeah sort of distorted but we can use these different styles of dithering to sort of smooth out the pixels so for quite blocky standard sort of solid images you would probably go with none but when you get into photos that sort of thing you'd have to try some of the different dithering styles but I'm happy with that so I'll copy that back over onto the LCD and load it up and have a little bit of a chat about the image itself because it's not some random one and it's the wrong size so as I talk about the image I will go back and I'll make it 178 pixels not 89 pixels so this is Hephaestus Back in episode one, I said that I would uh, talk about the name Hephaestus from where it came from, and here we are finally 15 episodes later, and I'm finally getting around to it. So Hephaestus is the Greek god of fire, metalworking, stonemasonry, forges, and the art of sculpture. So I thought that was quite appropriate to name my planet after that Greek god. You would probably know him more under his Roman name of Vulcan but I can't name the planet Vulcan, that would just be wrong. But anyway, yeah, I think that given Space Engineers how it all works, and yeah, I thought that was really appropriate. It's not easy naming a planet, you know. So that's the process for Space Engineers image to LCD. Now I'm going to use another method, which is the same as the images that are already in Space Engineers. So putting them into a texture, and that way you can bring them up on the screens like the posters and that sort of thing. So firstly, we will come up with our image. So I'm going to save a couple here. This is my faction logo again. I'm going to save a higher resolution one this time, 512. You can go higher than that. You can do like 1024 or 2048. That's going to affect your memory and game speed, I would imagine. So I find 512 is absolutely fine. I'm going to save that as a PNG file. And then for my faction logo in the faction menu, I'll save now transparent version. So I'm using my old copy of Photoshop here to remove the background and save the PNG as the, just the layer only. Quite a good technique to actually know that for other programs as well, like Microsoft, to get transparent backgrounds. Now that I have those files already, I need to convert them into a format that Space Engineers is able to use, which is a DDS file. Pretty simple to convert that just using an online converter. You can just Google to find them. Got one here that I use, and I'll just drag one of these icons down so you can have a look at it. Don't need to go through a file directory. I can just drop and drag them. So yeah, this is uh, AnyCov which is quite good, it just saves any cov in the file name when you download, but you can easily overwrite that so there's no watermarks or anything. Just pop it in there, it's already preset to DDS, so we can convert that over. I'll just pull the other one in as well. You can actually um, use some marking and select multiple and pull them in all at once. And yeah, then just uh, convert those over, which will just take a second. And once they're done, I'll just download them and save them as a nice convenient name that I can remember and nice and short to type. I'll put them in my faction logo folder so I know where to find them, but that's not where they'll end up. There is a special location you need to put them. So now we have all our images ready, we need to tell Space Engineers where to find them. So we need to navigate into this program files folder and through the path through Steam and Steam apps. And we're trying to find this data folder in here which contains the configuration file for the LCD textures, which is just here. And if we open up that configuration file in Notepad, we can actually see all the existing default textures that you'd find on the list if you scroll down when programming an LCD. Now we're going to copy one of these existing ones and just edit it. So the part that we're aiming for is to start with the LCD texture definition, and then we're going to finish with the LCD texture definition with the little forward slash in the front of it. So we'll grab that block there, and just for visuals, I'll take it up the top here and paste it. You can see the ones that I did for the map just below. So I'll make a bit of a gap here. So that's the block that you want to copy and paste in. So now we just need to customize this with our file names. So first of all, I'm going to do the subtype ID and the localization ID. And I'm just going to use my file name without the extension on it. This doesn't actually really matter. It's just what it's going to be listed in the control panel as. I put DDS on the start just so it's at the top of the list and I know it's mine. So that's those. And then need to put in the file names down here. 
paying attention to where the file path is that we're actually using. So we're in the textures folder and in the sprites folder and the models folder. So these are the two locations that we need to put copies of our files. So I'll do that now, so just save this. Now those folders are in approximately the same location as the data folder. So I've just gone out of that and now into textures and there's our sprites folder. So I'll paste the file that I just copied a second ago, pop that in there, and then we'll go out of here into the models folder and we'll put one in here as well. I don't know why you have to put one in each. I don't know how it works, but this is what you have to do. So we'll go out of that. Now I'll go back into Space Engineers. I will need to restart it, but we'll have a look at how it turned out. Welcome back. Now you can see I've reloaded the image using the Monospace LCD to image process that we just covered off before. I will delete this because it is over the top of the image because of course the images you can have in the background behind text. So I'll get rid of this construction one. Here we can see the map ones that I have in the command unit and my faction logo. So we'll add that to the selection and there it is. So yeah, a higher resolution, uh, really happy with that. And if I look a little bit closer, it does actually got a few little errors there that I'll probably have to edit some smudges, so I'll get rid of those. Now, continuing on with the faction logos, we'll move on to that transparent one that I'll use in the factions menu. And who are space spiders? Oh, I don't think I've come across them before. Hmm, anyway, there is my faction down there, and the current faction logo. What I want to do to change this is I'll edit it, and then I will go into this little eye button here, and these are all the icons that I've got to choose from. So how do I get my icon on that list? So the answer to that is I don't fully know. I know a way, but I'm not saying it's the right way or the complete way. We'll go back into the textures folder and up into the faction logos. What I'm going to do is just basically replace one of the existing ones because I can't find a configuration file to edit. I don't know where it is. So what I'm going to do is I don't know what this other icon 11 is. We're just going to pick that one completely at random because it's on the end. I'm going to change the name of my file to that and replace the one in the folder. So wherever that config file is, that should still be correct. It's all just going to update with the new image which is kind of what I've done with the maps and the TV files. All I need to do is change the files. As long as they've got the same file name, then they'll end up on the screen without having to re-edit the configuration file. Now I've just restarted Space Engineers and we'll go back into this faction icon menu and you can see we can adjust the background. So if I go and find my one, which should be down the bottom, there it is. As you can see, I can adjust the background on that too, because I've used the transparent PNG file converted to a DDS. And there we go. That's our logo. Fantastic. All right, now I was going to do the maps and stuff. I obviously, they were up on the wall in the command center already, so I've already done the work on that. But I think we're getting a little bit late in the episode now and probably need to do some space engineering, I think. And we might do the maps tomorrow. So what I'm going to do now is look at, uh, yeah, I think putting a reactor on this thing. I'll do that down here on the isolate, get that started, because whatever I'm short of component wise, hopefully I can get out of the trading post and we'll head up to the training post. Hopefully I can figure out how to connect the beast up to it. Now I think I've found a spot to put the reactor. There's a elbow conveyor underneath those sets of stairs, which I think the easiest way to access it will be just through this panel here. I think it's behind this axle. Yep, there it is. So I'll get rid of that, because uh, the reactors do have right angle inlets, so you can put them on a corner. So this is a perfect little spot for it. If the piston is up, I can, well, I might be able to access it actually. Not that I need to, I'll um, set up on the bridge another button panel, same as the hydrogen one with the timer and those sorts of things. So hopefully I've got a few components so I can put this together and then I'll just grab the rest out of the uh, trading post. Might need to grab some like silver ingots or gold or whatever it is I need to construct the reactor components. Um, but in saying that, it appears like I'm only short of computers. Hmm, so maybe I've got more components than what I thought I did. 
Hang on, let's just have a look. Yeah, all done. Awesome. And uh, there he goes. Just uh, it's turned on, so it sucked a bit of uranium in there. Well, that is good. All right, I'll um, plug this gap up. Uh, in actual fact, I will put a few timers in here, I think, and then head to the bridge and set up the button panel. And not for the first time, and probably not the last time, that took a very long time. I think most of that past sort of half hour, hour will end up on the cutting room floor. But anyway, all done now. So yeah, got these buttons in. Same sort of setup as the hydrogen engine. And as you can see, the reactor is just putting through so much power. It's just charging up the batteries, no worries. I've also used the automatic LCDs too to set up just a little bit of a monitor for the uranium. So you can see it's just slowly going through that. I haven't got a heap, but certainly got enough to keep the reactor going for a little while to help me on my travels. Also have a five minute timer which I can just set and forget. I ended up putting in quite a few timers and had I known how many timers that I was going to put on the beast because they're pretty much all up either side I probably would have gone with one of my setups of using a hinge or a rotor to reduce down to small grid and have a whole lot of small ones tucked away somewhere out of the way. But hindsight's a 2020 vision. So anyway let's head up to the trading post. made it. Uh, that was quite a struggle actually. Uh, this beast, even though it is very versatile and goes almost anywhere, it does sort of handle like an oil tanker, especially on that lumpy bumpy terrain. It's uh, kind of like being in rough seas. You might have one end of the boat in the water, but the other end might be sticking out a bit. But anyway, managed to make it up out of that lake bed. It was a little bit tricky getting up that gully, quite steep at the end there, but we made it. So just having a look at my awesome power readouts and certainly having that reactor makes the battery levels a lot more healthy. But what I did do was just turn on that hydrogen generator just to give it a little bit of a top up, more so to get rid of some of that ice because yeah, it did feel a little bit heavy coming up the hill. Now I need to sort out getting these gravity components traded in at the trading post 
get some monies for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flyer over there and land that. And so that'll be what I'm going to put all the gravity components in. And I'll just use the buggy to run the rest over and manually load them in because the fly is not going to get off the ground with all those components in it. Now I do just need to add on a little bit of an extension onto the back of the flyer. Just there's not quite enough room for the components. So I only need like connector to add a bit more volume, a bit more cargo space. Do a right angle thing and get a downward facing one so that I can connect into the base. Now I was actually racking my brains how I was going to do that, I thought I might use some pistons or something, use the buggy arm back up and connect in, but actually uh, just using those two vehicles was quite easy. So cash this in, there we go, 14 million space credits, absolutely awesome, and I think I'm going to spend some of that while I'm here and buy some uranium ingots. Uh, just have a quick look, see if there's any other real simple acquisition contracts to finish off we'll grab that one there with the silicon that's pretty cheap cobalt yeah i've got plenty of that i'll do that and nah i don't want to give those up nah i don't want to give that up too heavy uh yeah that's all right yeah i'll grab those and the steel tubes will be too heavy okie pokey Go and buy some uraniums and see what else is in the shop as well. It was a bit of a hassle getting those gravity components, but a worthwhile hassle because 14 million space credits is a fairly sizable chunk. Okay, so ooh, might grab those data pads, see what's on there. And mm, med kits, no, I think I've got enough of those. And there's the uranium. Right. Uh, okay, that's quite expensive. So I won't go for all of it. Well, how about we go for 50? See how much that costs us. Uh, uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll shout myself 100. I think I've earned it. Still got plenty of money left over. That's only 8 million. So still plenty in the bank. Okay, let's get back to the beast. Drop this uranium off. And we'll pick up those silicon and the cobalt for the acquisition contracts. Yeah, good to get that contract finished. Uh, <laughs> the gravity was weighing heavy on me. Yeah. Uh, so get these other ones finished off and that'll be us for the day, I think. Got through a little bit today, probably not much in regards to the journey, which will certainly start to make some decent progress on that next time. It was good to cover off that LCD stuff. I wanted to share that because in my research figuring it all out, I found that there wasn't any central repository for that sort of information, so I thought I'd do that. I think I covered it off okay. I was considering whether I had a sort of separate tutorial or extended edition. I guess if that's something you want, then you could leave a comment, but I think I'll just leave it how it is. Obviously, next time I need to also get back to that map as well, so I've still just got to finish that off and show you what I did there. I will definitely get airborne again and try and figure out a route to wherever we're going to set up our base. And I guess finding a location for that base is going to be a priority. So I'll tell you what, next episode, 
we will find a base location. I won't finish the episode until that location has been found and then we've got an end for our journey and we can move on to setting up a permanent base. Now I've got all these components on board now I'll head back and cash in the contract. Good to just get a few space credits up my sleeve and just keep that reputation ticking over. Not that I'm expecting it to lower, you never know. So that was a nice easy one. Same with the cobalt and had to work it a little bit for the detectors but nevertheless pretty straightforward. 47k, nothing to sneeze at. Also getting that reputation just ticking over. Right, I think we'll just take advantage of the facility while we're here because we will be bugging out pretty soon and although I probably will be back not anytime soon so we'll grab a drink, get some tunes, sit down have a rest. Oh, that's not really the mood I'm in. Oh, neither is that. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'll sit down have my coffee. Uh, yeah, so that's the end. So that'll just leave me to say thanks everybody for watching. Hope you did enjoy it today. A little bit different with the LCD tutorial taking up the bulk of the episode. Uh, but yeah, as I say, we'll look at getting more into our journey next time. So yeah, thanks again for watching. Stay safe out there, everybody. Have a good one and we'll catch you next time.